Doug, and that completes the manual piloting demonstration. Uh, I only had to twist Doug's arm for two or three minutes to get him to allow me to deactivate the piloting controls. <laughs> we copy. Excellent. Thank you. And with that, we ask that you, from the display used for manual piloting, please go to audio settings and adjust a gain setting for seat one or four. And in addition, we would appreciate any handling qualities evaluation of the proximity piloting possible. We've completed the gain setting adjustment for seat one, and I'll uh, turn it over to Doug for the uh, handling quality quick look. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop for the uh, handling qualities. It uh, flew just about like the stem, so uh, my congratulations to the folks uh, in Hawthorne. It flew really well, very crisp. Uh, it was a little sloppier and wide, just like we saw in the stem, uh, but it, all the other axes, as well as uh, closure and opening, were all just as perfect. Excellent to hear. Thank you. Some oh, yeah. That kinda, I'm piloting it while they're gives landing. you an <laughs> indication of sort of how the design process works. You know, Bob and Doug have had lots of opportunities to, to test this out and sim it and give their feedback. Uh, and pretty cool to hear that their sim experience was very similar to what they saw actually on orbit. Just, uh, you, I think you said 170 meters away from station right now. Yeah, we're just 176, and I, I imagine as a spacecraft designer, that's exactly what you want to hear, is the way that I trained you in it here on the ground is exactly how it performed once you're there for the real thing. So the second manual piloting test in the books, Bob and Doug putting Dragon through its paces. Now we're time to put it all to where we get to our end point. We're ready to get Dragon docked to the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. The ground will be resuming approach shortly. We do plan to hold briefly at waypoint two, so reminder that crew visors down is are not required until the ground is preparing to command the final approach. Thanks, Dragon. We copy. We'll hold uh, at waypoint two for a pause, and then we'll get our visors then once you command. Copy. And station hit the station on the big loop. As you've heard, Endeavor is resuming its approach to waypoint two. Chris, you can monitor now for step two. That's step two in one decimal one zero four. Crew Dragon approach and retreat monitor. Copy step two of work. Pretty cool view of the International Space Station from Dragon. Uh, this this would actually be overlaid, uh, or rather their controls would be overlaid on the displays um, on top of this view. And we got a, got to see some pretty cool views uh, from behind. Actually, there's a, there's a view right there. You can see the station on their displays. Um, visors up, Doug in the left seat, Bob in the right seat. So at this moment, Dragon is going to be resuming the approach. As we heard them informing the crew, they're going to have that uh, one final hold when they're just 20 meters away. That's going to be at waypoint two. We're expecting it to be a brief hold while the teams all tag up and do a final go to move in for docking. Getting a great look at the space station itself. The docking port is right in the center of our screen. You can see another spacecraft currently docked to the space station, oh. the Japanese HTV spacecraft currently docked uh, to the Earth-facing port, uh, one of those common berthing mechanisms also on Node 2. So Dragon will be the second vehicle uh, to be docked to the Harmony module once it makes its uh, final approach. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Yeah, 
and it's moving in right now. Again, just to give you an idea of how quickly they're moving, they're going at about three-tenths of a meter per second right now. And so if you're having any trouble with that docking simulator online, remember to just slow things down a little bit and your chances will go up exponentially. We just passed 140 meters away. Um, we'll get our live video com back with the space station momentarily. As soon as we do, we'll bring it back up there. Uh, but for now, Bob and Doug continuing to fly in. They're just 135 meters away. Station on the big loop uh, in, in step two review of steps three and four is complete. Crews on the International Space Station is ready for uh, docking. Station Houston, Big Loop, we copy the review of three and four complete. International Space Station ready, thank you. Expedition 63 Commander Chris Cassidy giving the report. Station is ready for docking. Yeah, and you can see the uh, the trajectory of the spacecraft. There are small corrections that are happening. So if the as we get closer and closer to station, we're trying to stay within those two corridors, which are shown coming out of the the docking port that we're going towards. That little dot, I think, was the 20-meter the hold point, so that's where we expect there to be uh, the spacecraft holding right in front of the international docking adapter. There'll be a go-no-go -no -go pole. The uh, ground teams have worked hard over the past probably years to come up with a set of what we call flight rules. So those are, those are technical constraints, items that we look for. Uh, that if any of those criteria were violated, then we have a rule that we've predetermined uh, gives us guidance to say whether we could approach or not. Um, so far, our vehicle has been very healthy, but uh, the technical ground teams will all do their due diligence to, to make sure that it's still safe to approach. And at this moment, that approach is continuing, still moving in at about three-tenths of a meter per second. Dragon's coming up on just 100 meters away from the space station. Uh, the state of 100 meters. So the very top there is the, the nose cone um, on the spacecraft. Where we've got a cool view. Uh, left side of your screen is the International Space Station. Right side of your screen is Dragon. We're inside 100 meters, continuing to close. Again, we're, we're going to have a short hold at 20 meters. Teams will just do a final check, and then they'll give Dragon the go. We're expecting it to be pretty brief. We should get to that hold point in just about four minutes, moving at our current pace. I think you can see uh, a meatball and American flag on that uh, on the spacecraft. The, uh, the NASA logo, of course, the, referred to as the meatball. I think there was some spirited discussion about the meatball versus the worm during ascent. And uh, those are, you can see those logos, they're, they're all, that structure on the, the fairing structure is actually what the Super Dracos are, are housed in. Of course, all of those are deactivated now, only used for launch escape during the ascent portion. Nose cone right at the, the top of the vehicle. And uh, you can see sort of the ceiling surface those uh, four circular, those four circular uh, slots right underneath the nose cone within that red ring are the the Ford bulkhead Dracos. That's what we were using while uh, we were conducting all those burns, um, the the five burns to to get to this point. Right now, we don't have, we don't have a reason to use those. We'll only be making small attitude corrections with the uh, with the service section. Dracos, and you can see the service section actually pretty clearly here too. Um, the uh, there's a black portion and a white portion, sort of separated by a fin. The black portion is uh, solar panels, solar cells that'll charge Dragon's batteries, and the bottom side, our uh, the white portion, is actually a thermal radiator that's used to keep keep the uh, spacecraft nice and cool. Of course, the avionics and the cabin, making sure that Bob and Doug are comfortable inside. Looks like we're getting a shadow cast. We are just 60 meters away, continuing to close in, just about 40 meters to go until we're at that hold point. Should get there in just over two minutes. Meanwhile, teams in Hawthorne and in Houston doing their internal go-no-go -go for docking. They're going to get all the teams pulled. Once everyone's go, we'll be able to give Dragon 
a final go ahead for the vehicle to autonomously fly in and dock with the International Space Station. Should be coming up on waypoint two arrival in just about one minute, 45 seconds. At this point, it'll be 20 meters away from that docking port. Uh, the International Docking Adapter number two attached to pressurized mating adapter number two at the very forward end of the Harmony module. Right there on the, uh, right around the, the center, you can see the Ford hatch. It's got a window in it. You can see a couple of handles, and there's uh, some features that look sort of bronze-ish. Those are the pedals that we were talking about earlier as part of the, the soft capture system. So uh, pretty pretty wild, too, to see. We're, we're so close that we're getting shadows from the station <laughs> on Dragon. Wow. And we're getting these views of Dragon's approach from two cameras that are right next to that docking adapter. And the movement's a little a little jarring at times. Uh, the, these cameras are being commanded by a person at the Cronus console in Mission Control Houston, and they send some uh, some very basic function commands to the camera, which it then executes automatically. And so they're continuing to follow Dragon in, so we do thank them for their diligence to, to give us these views of this historic moment as we are just less than 30 meters away from docking. Right above the uh, NASA meatball logo, you can see two, uh, excuse me, three of the, the service section Draco thrusters. That's right, 12 in all. So the four of those clusters spread around the vehicle, used for a lot of the attitude control and any small translational maneuvers like we just watched Bob and Doug execute with their second manual flight test. Yeah, and actually oriented in a way, too, where if you were to lose some of those thrusters, you still have redundancy and, and control in those axes. That's, uh, that's part of the reason why they're sort of at the angles that they are. All right, so we should be getting to waypoint two right now. So it looks like we do have that hold. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. The ground is go for approach two. We will be enabling the resume shortly. As a reminder, ensure your visors are closed prior to Dragon's departure from the waypoint. And once Dragon is inside, the crew hands-off point, retreat, and breakout are not permitted. And for your awareness, we have sunset in a little less than 8.5 minutes. And copies all on the big loop. Go for Dragon. So Doug on uh, on the spacecraft confirming their go for docking. They're going to put down their visors. Got some uh, instructions there about the the crew hands off point that we had talked about earlier. That's a point where we don't want the the crew issuing any commands to the vehicle. It's about uh, just about two meters away from the docking adapter. I believe the number is about one point seven meters. Station Houston on the big loop. Houston and station are now go for docking. Chris, you can monitor for steps three and four. Three and four in one decimal one zero four. Crew dragon approach and retreat monitor. Copy steps three and four. Next dragon on the big loop. Our visors are down. Copy visors down. the crew confirming their visors down, we should see the final approach resume. Copy inbound. And we're going to be racing that sunset. The approach has resumed. Dragon closing in. We're inside 20 meters. And yeah, that, that crew hands-off point uh, should come up in about three minutes or so, uh, right before we get that final docking. It comes about 20 seconds prior, or just about two meters away from the station still. And that's uh, just the crew not issuing any abort commands. At that point, it would be uh, too late, 
and so any aborts would be executed automatically by Dragon itself. So we're closing in at less than a tenth of a meter per second at this point. You can see the, the service section Draco is just doing all these very small minor attitude corrections. Really the, the autonomous docking system at work, making sure that the the uh, vestibule and the soft capture system is lined up with IDA2, it's the international docking adapter. You can see much more clearly there the hinge mechanism for the nose cone. Those four uh, black circles are the four bulkhead Dracos, not to be used at this time. And then, of course, the, the pedals of the soft capture system. Wow. Dragon on the big loop, we're inside 10 meters. We cannot make out the dark stocking charges, but we do see the outline. We copy and concur 10 meters. All right, we're less than 10 meters away. Again, we're closing at that rate of less than a tenth of a meter per second. We should be just about one minute 45 seconds away from docking. There is a, uh, a center line camera right in that middle so that you can see where the Ford hatch is uh, and right in the middle of that there's a window and there's a center line camera that is aligned with the center of the vehicle and the center of the docking mechanism. So that is is what the autonomous docking system is using to line up with uh, sort of a cross hatch, um, cross target on the, the docking port. Again the Ford docking port um, on PMA2, or the pressurized mating adapter. We are just five meters away. Again, we're racing that sunset. This dragon continues to close, four meters to go. The shadows of the, of the space station on the vehicle. Yeah, you can actually see the uh, centerline camera pretty clearly there. Um, sort of with the contrast of the, the sun right now. Three meters to go. Oh, well, I tell you, it's really Two sensitive. meters. We are inside the hands-off point, the chop the crew hands-off point. One meter to go. Soft capture complete. Dragon inspection. Soft capture confirmed. Stand by for retraction and docking. And we just heard it. Soft capture. We have docking. That coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. You saw a little bit of motion there uh, of Dragon. It was that relative motion that the soft capture system is damping out. Once that yeah. motion is, is clear, then uh, the soft capture system will be retract, retracted and uh, Dragon will go for hard capture. <laughs> Again, if just now tuning in, that soft capture, that docking coming, 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the East Coast, Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. So that soft capture ring now going to retract. It's one more step on the way to docking complete. Now, we put the onboard. 
Yeah, and so the, the next step here is once once the soft capture ring is retracted, there are uh, 12 latches that we refer to as hard capture latches. Um, those are what will really create that pressure tight seal between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. So once soft capture is complete, and uh, I believe we'll get that call from, from our core here, Anna, then uh, we'll get we'll get confirmation of a hard capture, and uh, the crew, of course, aboard have have this information on their displays, so they'll also see indication of hard capture complete. And uh, once those two steps are done, then that's that's docking complete. That's right. We're we're expecting to hear some words from everybody. A pretty monumental moment. I mean, for Doug Hurley, he's returning to where he last docked uh, almost nine years ago on the very last space shuttle mission, uh, now commanding the very first commercial spacecraft to deliver astronauts to the International Space Station. That's That's got to be cool for them. Uh, they've, they've mentioned quite a few times that their best friends uh, are our favorite dads in space, as we've been calling them. Uh, this, is, this has got to be really cool for them. It's got to be really cool for their families, too, watching this. That's frustrating. Okay, that's it. 